Hi, I'm Dan. And uh, we're gonna have a little bit of something new. Uh, we're gonna have what's called a, a story time. Now, see, when I was younger, I was a small, small kid, right? And I used to spend a lot of time out hanging out in my backyard because my brother would never want to deal with me. So one day he decided he was going to lock me out. He was going to lock me in that backyard because he wanted nothing to do with me. In a fit of rage, I had to assert my dominance. So I peed on that back window. I peed all over that back window as he sat there and left me locked out in my backyard. Now, I would get, now my mom would not be too happy about me peeing on that window. And yeah, I don't blame her, right? I, I wasn't mad at the window, I was mad I was locked out. But I knew I had to get back at Mr. Patrick, the, the so-called LIM champion. So, now, <laughs> I wasn't a big kid by any means. I was probably about six years old. Now, me and Pat are six years apart, so he was about 12 years old. And uh, I knew I couldn't, you know, take him on, you know, because he's bigger than me. But I knew who could. So what I did was uh, I took a thing of water and I put it behind the toilet seat. So that way when my mom would sit down, you know, he, she would get mad at him for peeing on the back of the toilet seat, even though... It was just water. And he got screamed at, you know, and I, I was victorious in the matter. And uh, that's all that matters. Remember, Pat, I've always been able to outsmart you and I always will be able to outsmart you. And now I got the brawn behind me too. So I'm gonna be putting down beer after beer after beer and I'm gonna take back what's rightfully mine because I left it on loan to you. The following podcast has been recorded by LIM. From taverns across Chicagoland, to St. Joe's Park in Joliet, to the world of podcasting, they're upholding the good name of Chet Gunderson and letting the old styles flow. They are the lovely intoxicated men. And this is the lovely intoxicated podcast. Walked away with the victory, Gabagool. Listen, the only reason why you won is because this punk behind me handed you the last old style, right? Last yeah. call was already called. This guy is the root of all evil. He's the root of all my problems. I don't think so. I think he's I just, be, he saw someone who was muted. That's good. Leave him muted. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to hear him anyways. I want a rematch for the LIM championship, another drinking contest. Uh, against who? Me Against me? Wait, hold on, guys, guys. Can you guys hear me? First of all, can you guys? Yeah, hear open me? your mouth. No. Okay. Go back to mute. No, because we got to start the show. This is the lovely intoxicated podcast. I am PX, one of the co-hosts, and your L I M. And dude, you just great call Khalid that shit. <laughs> I am the L I. I am the will champion. And joining me, Danny, making his return to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, uh, Tony Gabagool. You know what, PX? I'm so angry I can rip off my hair piece. All right? Hair loss, I mean, this is the second time I've seen you with hair loss the entire time I've known you. Yeah. We also have double. He doesn't J. take the feet too well. We have Maximus Orion, and we have special <laughs> guests here tonight. We have not only the mayor of Sir Mac Road and the man who was job, Chet Gunderson, <laughs> But Wait, hold we on, also it's backwards. Have Captain Dave of Captain Dave's Galley fame. Hello, guys. What's up? Hello. What's house uh, house for hangings? Oh fuck! I wrote it wrong. Good. What did you What did you write wrong? I was <laughs> trying to write Chet, but like it shows up backwards. Okay, no, it doesn't. It's it. fine. No, it's fine. I can't oh, is it? <laughs> Only looks backwards to you. It looked backwards to me. Oh lord. We are off to a rocking start, aren't we? Dan, you, and I think the thing is we've all seen your promo where you talk about um, P 
peeing on a window. And I just want to clarify. That yeah, this it was is, traumatic. Wait, it was... this is this is the LIM, not the TMI. And you're giving us TMI. Listen, listen, I'm going back to my roots. All right. And my roots stem from me peeing on that window, being locked out by you. Nonetheless, Pat, Pat. It Whatever was an the... accident. I don't know what his name is. It was an accident. Accident. You waved at me as you locked the door. Yeah, because I was like, hey, I, I was happy to see you. you and went... I didn't realize I locked the door on account of my OCD. I always have to make sure the doors are locked. So it might have been accidental. It wasn't intentional. And it was on purpose. did nothing to deserve that. It was on purpose. And you want to sit there and you want to claim that you have the brawn now somehow. And I'm going to give you this. You can out drink a good chunk of people. I mean, hell, you out drank Tony Gabagool last show. I did. That I did. You did. And what was what was the count on that? Uh, what was it, 22 or 23? Uh. So, I mean, you went all out. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt you're going to go all out when you face me for this. Well, yeah, I'm going to take back what's rightfully mine because you can't even hold up the honor of that title. Here's the thing with that. Oh, no, 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 buddy. Here's the thing with that. You put it on the line against Double J, and he had to drive. So it doesn't mean that he could even drink. You had to drink two beers. Wow. Real rookie numbers. Well, at least I defended it. When did you defend your title? I defended my title on the East Coast, you bastard. We don't see any video proof. Do we have video proof of it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll send it to you, you bastard. You'll doctor it. You'll have, probably have Simp run some AI video or something. Dude, you that guy doesn't really talk much. <laughs> that doesn't mean he can't make videos. You can't, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You talk a big game, but you cannot put your money where your mouth is. Pat, I'm going to tell you one thing. All right. You know the phrase, mama didn't raise no bitch? Well, mama raised you. She raised you know both what? of you, didn't she? she yeah, but I'm the better one. Technically, yeah. she... Now, here's the thing. You're going up against somebody who's already had a fight. Because if you remember back in December, and you were there for this... I defended the fans and I beat the idols with the help of Johnny Nye and C Red and Flash. Love you, Dad. I miss you. And here's okay. the thing have you called Flash lately? No, no, I don't think I have. Because you know what? I actually talked to my real dad. And this is why I'm Flash's favorite son. Okay. What's Tony Gabagool got there? He's got his head, and I, it looks like uh, our dad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In the background. All right, I'm done. Here's Goodbye. the thing. No, I get the last word. You don't get the last word. I get the last word. No, I think I get the last word. No, Goodbye. <laughs> you don't get the last word. I get the last word. No, I, I see the leave meeting button right now, so I'm going to get the last no, word. No, so, I don't Goodbye. get the last word. You get the... Oh, shit. How's everybody doing tonight? It's good. You? Could be better. But we have a lot to talk about tonight, and I'll deal with the rest of everything later. But we're going to talk... I'm the only person in this call without glasses on right now. I just want to note that noted. You... I'm an inclusive guy. I'll sacrifice my vision for you. (laughs) I have a pair of sunglasses in the other room. I can go and get those for you. It's my house. What are you going to do? Orb them to me? Yeah, I'll find a way. I'll find a way. I'll, like, use the force or something. I'll figure it out. Wait, and to quote Han Solo, that's not how the force works. I get that reference. I love that (laughs) reference, and I get that reference. Double J, are you... uh... Having an easy time reading the screen down there? I got these from Simp. I can't hear you without my glasses. What'd you say? Okay, Velma. What? Speaking of Captain Dave, Captain Dave is here. Captain Dave. Yes, sir. What can the fans expect in the kitchen this month? We are doing commentator tots. 
with with cheese and some maybe some bacon bits all right all right we can get behind that we're gonna get behind that that sounds delicious I mean, you bet banger after banger after banger in that kitchen with the M80 bites, yeah, and, with the um, cotton candy. Wait, wait, wait till May. Oh, I can't wait till May. Can't say anything right now. Let's get through April 1st. All right. Well, well you're already it. past April 1st. It's April 5th. <laughs> oh, yeah. April 1st. Wasn't that the day we decided Let's to be like a Let's get through spring network? break. Is that better? Yeah. Hey, I, I, I heard from the news that Bill Shelley might go to this. I heard it's very heard possible. Rumors. It's very, very possible. I don't know. That was the fake news, though. No, that was pretty real. I think those guys reported the facts. If I'm not go, mostly he goes. Is mm. reporter for me. That's true. That is true. And we have spring break that we got to talk about right now. Uh, we have lots of matches. We have segments. We have interesting news that we're going to bring to you. But before we get to all of that, there's another show this weekend that we all got to talk about. And that is WrestleMania. Now, is Cody going to finish the story? He better because I'm getting tired of this book. It's a long book. It's a lot of chapters. Double J, you're someone with glasses. What do you think about Cody reading a book? I I like books. I also like a nice girthy story, but I I, I would have to agree with Maximus. I think it needs to end. Um, And we'll see what happens on Sunday. Tony? What's your opinions on reading? Do you think Cody will pass Listen, the AR test? I don't have to read the book. I wrote it. Thank you. Chad Gunderson, what do you think? Is Cody going to finish the story, or is he going to have to put a bookmark in the book? I think he finished, but for books, I am not read good uh, English. In Czech Republic, I am very big for readings. But here, no. And Captain Dave, last but not least... Um, I'd rather walk the plank. Thank you. I see. All right. All right. Now, Chuck Gunderson, you're the CEO of Rocket Pro Wrestling, and that tends to make you the final boss. With regard to that, that was a good, it was a good segue because we're going to talk about <laughs> the rock now. You hear that, Hunter and Nick? Book it. The two final bosses <laughs> facing off. Night three of WrestleMania. All right, let's 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 go with it. Let's go with that. <laughs> is Chuck Gunner- <laughs> Gunderson versus The Rock? Who is the ultimate final boss? I don't know. After the uh, Chet's appearance in that Rocket Rumble, uh, what two years ago? Yeah, he gave he gave Marche just the biggest elbow drop to his kidney. So, um, I don't know. If I was The Rock, I I would I would watch out because, you know. The Brahma Bull is nothing, you know, nothing to the Bohemian Bull. So, you know. His very special move is called Hobie Drop. <laughs> oh! That's that's chant. We got to remember that, guys. That's going to be a chant. Point. It's mushroom to you. Hobie to me. The Hobie Drop. Tony Gabagool, you're someone that has opinions. Chet or The Rock? I am a Czech guy. I am job Chet all the way. Yeah! Captain Dave, you're sitting right next to the man himself. Is he ready to take on The Rock? It's not going to be at this WrestleMania. It's just the one in our heads. I plead the plank. He's pleading the plank, wow. ladies and gentlemen. It's on the Basically racket. choosing The Rock. Wow. That's- <laughs> oh, interesting. But then we also have... Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Oh, I'll be going to the bathroom during that one. But this, let's think about it this way. The Intercontinental Championship is on the line. It's a title held by so many people, especially Santino Morella. And Santino had a honkometer. 
And That's he only true. got up to 12 weeks. I don't know how lo- many weeks Gunther's reign is, but it's longer than 12 weeks. Sammy going to come out? Is he going to be the Ricky Steamboat to, or wait, Ultimate Warrior? We'll fix that in post. To. I am pick Gunther's Gunther home. because he is remind me of Van Yeager. Gabagool? The greatest intercontinental champion of all time, fake Ric Flair. I go with Gunther. I don't think that actor was anyway. Double J, you have wrestling experience. What do you think between Gunther and Sami Zayn? Well, in my experiences of grappling with big sweaty men, I don't believe uh, I believe Gunther can bring it out <laughs> on top because he can grab them the best. Um, yep, scissor me in half. That's what Gunther's gonna do. I think we're going with the double J. Part. Scissor me timbers. <laughs> it's a pirate joke, Captain Dave. I heard, Captain Dave, you're you've got a pirate hat. What do you think? He's gonna plead the blank. He's going to play the plane. I'm calling what it right we, now. What, what are we discussing? Gunther versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. Just go with whatever Chet says. Yeah, there you go. I'm on his <laughs> side. Is Gunther because it's Gunther. because <laughs> is very much like Van Jaeger. And since WWE decides to take Chet's ideas, why not? Exactly. And Sami Zayn called... should not even be in that match. <laughs> Sami Zayn should not be in that. I am so sick of Sami Zayn at this point. Great. You had your Roman run back to the bottom level for you. I do not care. He should not. Thank God he's not in the main event. He should not be in there. I cannot stand it. I can't stand it. It should have been Chad Gable is really who it should have been. So that's it's really we're just getting a crap match now. You so. said you said something about the bottom level. In the final level are the RPW tag team champions, and there is a giant ladder match for the tag team titles. The final level aren't in the match, but I just thought it sounded like a good segue in my head. They should be. Who's going out as Raw champion? Who's going out as SmackDown champion? Are they does, separating it? They are. Well, how the hell does that work? It's going to be basically like WrestleMania 2000 with the European and Intercontinental Championship. There's going to be one mat- ladder match where the Raw Championship, well, the Raw Championships and the SmackDown Championships are both going to be hung up. And the first team to get the Raw Championships are the Raw Champions. But then the and match keeps going? The match keeps going. Well, what if they mm-hmm. grab them both? I think one's going to be up. I think it's like, okay, so then are they like out of the match? No, so they just like, like walk back and yeah, then they, they, they are because <laughs> they are I that's I that I did hear that they're whoever if you win the raw ones, you're go to the back because they're trying to yeah. mm, I wonder if then another team's gonna take their place yeah. and do like a special reveal. And then the final level could be in there. They Ooh. could be the special special replacements for that match. I, what if nobody grabs them because they forgot to put the ladders under the ring? Then guess who the new champion is? Vacant. The arena. Vacant wins the title. Philadelphia is the champion. City of champions. Especially Rocky Balboa. But speaking of Rocky Balboa, Chuck Gunderson, it's been a while since I've heard your Rocky impression. It is a fantastic Rocky impression. Maximus, have you ever heard this Rocky impression? Yeah. It's it's all, a great. All, all, all the time. It's great. It's fantastic. What I was trying to ask you is... Uh... If you wouldn't mind marrying me too much. Okay. <laughs> it's 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 like he's there. That's all I that's all I'm saying. And it does take place in Philadelphia. So and you're a rude guy. Treat me rude. That ca- that commercial. The only American accent check can do. But it's spot on. It's like Stallone was there. If Stallone was still alive to hear this right now. He would be touched. He, he is still alive, Pat. Oh, I got a shot at the title. But I got a shot at the title, but I got no locker. Now do I, man? Tony Gabagool, what do you think of the Rocky impression? 
He thinks it's Nod. Solid. Are you eating, are you eating, eating Gabagool? Here. Yeah. You're eating, you're you're being a cannibal on it's our solid. program. And it's we don't solid. we in the words of Aaron Stone, disclaimer, we do not condone cannibalism. It's oh, baby wow. LaGreca. What's up, baby LaGreca? <laughs> What's up, dude? Nothing? You're on the podcast. Look at you. Look at you. Podcast and superstar. Say hi to Chet. Look at, I mean, he just hears PX talk and it's just it's utter disappointment on his face. No, it's just because I'm a champion and I have an aura, so I, I understand. He's kind of lost. Pat, that word. Pat, we've been Back over this. Aura. You're not allowed to, you know, make kids cry. We've, we've, there was a whole thing. You're not allowed to do that anymore. Your whole town has a petition now because of trick or treaters coming to your door. Yeah, now <laughs> they're going to come back and you're going to have to move again. You have to change your name. It's a whole I'll, thing. I'll just change my name for last name Papa, first name Podcast. Podcast Pop. That the joke. The joke is it's Podcast Pop. Anyway, anything else that we need to say about? <laughs> WrestleMania. Hmm. Uh I don't think anybody picked who they want to win the tag titles. Oh yeah. Who do we have in the tag title match? I know we have Awesome Truth. I know we have those other guys. I Hold know on, I got you. Thanks, man. Yep. Although I'm just saying, I'm just gonna I'm just going automatically with Awesome Truth. I think Awesome need Truth to... is gonna win one set of titles for they sure. Need, probably the raw ones. I don't think Judgment Day is going to walk out with any of them. No, no, no. They're not going to retain because I think Priest is cashing in on somebody. I think it'll be uh, uh, Mm -hmm. Seth freaking Rollins. Um, We got Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. You got them. The the, the, uh, not Storm Grayson. No, not no. Grayson Waller. Grayson. Uh, You got. What is it? D, what is it? D generation. What were they calling it? P generation D-I- max. No, D I. What is? No, shut up. That's not a thing. <laughs> it is a what thing. is it? The D. What? Whatever. DIY. It is. DIY. It's you and me on yeah. WWE 2K24. You got. Shut up. You got New Day. Those are my Valor champions. and Priest. Awesome Truth and uh, what's it? Tyler. Whatever. Oh, and, the New Catch uh, Republic. Yeah. Is that is that what the hell they're called? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Them. So the only people deserving a championship in this one would be Champa and Gargano and Awesome Truth. I, I could see New Day picking up another win, and what would they, I think they would have like the they tie the record or they would break the record for most tag team runs. If they continuously bring it up the day of the show, then that'll probably be what happens. Yeah. Oh, you know, we also got Jimmy versus Jay, by the way. Ooh, another what? match of double J's. I should have been the guest referee. Brother versus brother. Gotta be able brother. to get down there quick to count, though. I can. I'm pretty speedy for a fat guy. All right. Okay. We didn't go over Drew versus Seth either. We we need to because CM Punk, star of hit TV show <laughs> WWE Monday Night Raw, is going to be uh, the special guest commentator for that match. Oh God. You, you know, think? you didn't tell me when I was going to be on this show all the time that I was going to need, like, Advil for my headache. Well, here's the qu- here's the biggest question. When he's sitting at commentary, do you think he'll have a delicious plate of Mindy's muffins? No, but I bet he's going to have a diet soda for John Cena to knock over. Well, I hope so. I hope it's a diet Pepsi. You spilled my diet soda! Double J, what kind of diet soda will, will CM Punk have at commentary? Whatever the sponsorship is. Yeah, probably, probably, uh, I think it'll be, you know, a, a diet of whatever Drew McIntyre has been drinking lately to try to get bigger, you know? Diet Baja Blast. There you go. Baja Blast is your calorie. That's pretty good. Wait, so actually old, tastes yeah, like crap, but. I'm drinking a diet old style. So an old style light? Is that a thing? That yeah, I actually bought them. They're terrible. Okay. You know, fellas, tonight I'm drinking good. a spotted cow. You can't see it. It's invisible. There you go. Kind of. I dated yeah, one of those ones. Or did you Spotted cow? There you go. Chad leprosy, I think. <laughs> oh Moving right God. along. Yes, thank you. Moving right along. Did she look like this? 
<laughs> kind of. Who is that guy? I keep seeing him hanging around the arenas. It's, it, it's St. Joe's Park. Who is this it's guy? Damien Saint. <laughs> Looking rough. It's Saint. What do you... <laughs> It's like they're analyzing it. All right, PX, moving right along. What about this one? You're muted again, dude. <laughs> when did Blackburn get here? Oh, it's not very funny. I don't look like a fat baby. <laughs> He's been hanging out at Captain Dave's Daily a little too much. <laughs> too many commentator tots. Oh, yeah, that's what happened. Oh, you you blow up like a Macy's Day parade balloon. I'm blowing you off. Anything else we got to talk about with WrestleMania? In short, I'm asking, so what do you guys want to talk about? No? Bueller? You make Bueller? my eye twitch. Well, you should get that checked out so you can watch WrestleMania the next two days. I'll be fine. It's just I, as soon as I hear your voice, it just starts to... Is question, where yes. where is LIM watching show for WrestleMania's? It will be at Max's house. You house? My house. Now I'm glad I'm flying tonight. <laughs> but yeah, because Shelly's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have... Oh, visit the, the Czech Republic. We have spring break, which will be Friday, Saturday, the 13th of April at Today is Friday. I'm I've been drinking too much of this beer, so I'm gonna put this down. Um, and we have a loaded show, and we're gonna talk about it right now. And loaded tots. And loaded tots. Commentator tots, if you will. Comment, yes. Speaking of commentators, the VHS Express will be in action against Joey and Roxy. They did win those titles that Tony Gabagool is showing right there back in May. And in the past, in the months after that, they focused very heavily on Johnny, on myself, on C-Red. And seemingly, the focus has shifted back to the VHS Express. Now, the challenge was made by Joey and Roxy to Steve and Shelley last month in the Ringmasters Funhouse. And... Now the titles are on the line. It's a tornado tag team match. Anything goes. The rules are simple. Instead of traditional tag, everybody is able to participate at the same time. Now, Joey and Roxy, as I've noticed, and maybe you guys have too, they seem to have a different approach going into this match. They have a lot to prove, especially with everything that's gone on since they lost back in May. Maximus, how do you think this is going to play out? Well, I know for a fact that there's not really going to be able to be, at least on the idols part themselves, they're not going to get away with any cheating because the moment that Gray or Cade step out there is that's the only two idols they got left isn't it that's it yep okay it's if one of those two steps out there we're all in the back so we're just waiting for one of them to step out there i could care less that i'm fighting with undeniable and ryan right now i'll step i don't care i'm around there somewhere i'll probably have commentator tots in my face but I, I'll just walk out there and it'll be stopped. There's only two of them left. We took out them. You know, we took them out when there was four of them out there. So it, it they're, they're not going to be able to cheat. I, I'm assuming Steve and my mother are going to retain because the only way they know how to cheat is by using their group. And it's dwindling by the day. You can have as many fabulous idolizers as you want, like all freaking three of them. Um, they can't jump the barricade, so they can't do anything. And, uh, they're, 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 it's just, it's, it's impossible. And the undeniable ain't going to help them because the undeniable and the idols aren't really, they don't, 
They don't like each other anyway. So who else you got? So there's no there's no reason for them to not retain. Now, actually, I have this next question for uh, Captain Dave. Uh, you may have heard that they're going to be bringing this fight all the way around the arena. Is the kitchen staff prepared just in case a little bit of this action spills into Justin? the kitchen? Just in case what? Just in case the Justin? match spills into the kitchen. I've got instruments to protect my, my crew. Double J, what's your thoughts about this match, the rematch of the century? Yeah, so in in theme of the the commentator tots, uh, Roxy and Joey are no commentators. They are old spuds, if you ask me, rotten Treated. potatoes that need to be squashed. And it's going to be pretty easy. They've been fighting for relevancy for the past few months and are just are coming up short. Joey's very used to that. And I think that's just going to carry over into this match and they're just going to lose. And it's simple as that. We're going to hear some like loud shrieking that's going to pierce the eardrums of everyone in that section. And we're just going to have to suffer through that the entire night then afterwards. What, Nani? Who? Nani? Never Ooh. heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> Tony? Me? This is what I call my grandmother. Listen. When our <laughs> Italian hero, when our Italian hero, Shelly beats the crap out of Roxy and even Joey, all right, Especially we will Joey. party and we will celebrate on April twenty fifth, Italian Liberation Day, all right, hey! and we will celebrate. We will also celebrate our great Italian hero, Shelly. We will. We will. And we'll get Chet's thoughts on this once he comes back. But in the meantime, let's talk about another match that the idols are a part of. We have Damian Gray, a man that I just so happened to have eaten Stroop waffles with. Uh, see, see, you thought I was going somewhere else with that, but I'm not. And Kevin Cade versus rock star Johnny Nye in a two on one handicap match. Now, this match was made by Damian Satan. The idols clearly, they're still very, very <laughs> upset about the defection of Johnny Nye. However, they still have not been able to beat Johnny since he's defected. They lost to him in December. They lost to him in February. Now, I, I think you're missing something, though, that people need to be aware of. What's that? Then. What's We're that? going karaoke with Johnny Nye. Oh yeah, I can't wait to hear when we're actually going to do that. I've heard I've heard so much about it. I'm excited. But the thing that we have to consider too is after February, the Idols went after Flash and injured him and took him out. Now Johnny's in this all on his own. So the odds are certainly stacked against him in this match made by uh Damian Saint so, what do you guys think? How is this match going to play out, in your view? Am I going first? Yes, you are. Oh, okay. Um, well, having beaten both the Dollar Tree Greaser and Tim the Tatman from Wish, um, Johnny should already know what to do because he already knows them. It's it was harder for me. Yeah, we know the idols. That's great. We know how they fight. Johnny really knows how they fight. He's gonna know every trick that they pull. There's there's nothing that they're gonna do, cheating. You know, pulling somebody's foot onto the rope. Uh, you know, all that stuff. I mean, Gray and uh, Cade. It's not a tornado two on one like the other tag match is. This is they got to tag in and out. So. I mean, it should be a tiny bit easier because you've got the referee's count of five. Two people can't be in there at the same time or two from one team can't be in there at the same time. So I, I know the numbers game is not in Johnny's favor, but I'm going to still say that Johnny has the advantage because he knows them and the idols are already on a losing streak. So... And trust me, the, the power of the crowd cheering you on definitely helps you 
win the match. So, or, you know, brings your chances way higher, way higher. So I'm going Johnny on that one. Chet, how do you think the idols are going to fare this month between both this match and also the match with the VHS Express? Lose, 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 win. That this makes is sense. what I think. Now, I am pay for, for matches. I am go to Czech Republic. It's not live, so I'm not watch, but I have connect for my friends. I know what's going on here. So at this time, I think idols not, how you say, uh, not suck the hind hit anymore. This is what I'm thinking is not sucking the, the <laughs> hind tit, you know, like the pig. You know, uh, is right? Is right? Yes. I couldn't agree more with you, sir. <laughs> Double J. You ever, hey, oh. Chet, you, sorry to cut you off, but Chet, you ever look at Damian Gray's head? Does it look like he's got a Hershey kiss up there? <laughs> <laughs> is is look like poo emoji. <laughs> Tony, uh, has your cousin, Tony Babagul Ross, has he ever uh, commissioned a painting to show this? He's poo emoji. <laughs> put it on his screen. Give me a second, I'll call him. Okay, good. Double J, uh, you're someone that knows Damien Gray. How do you think he's going to fare in this match? Well, I think we've all pointed out some very good qualities of how this match will go, but we're forgetting the most important thing is that Johnny has a full head of hair. These two men do not, and that's a real big advantage in his favor. He knows what it takes to grow and be patient with things, so I think that's going to help him in this match. Is he's going to be patient and wait for them to make a mistake and use his hair hey, like hey, a hey, whip. Hey. Quit talking shit about the bald folks. Sorry. I'm not I'll talking like shit about the bald folks. I'm just saying... See, you're a little short-tempered because you don't know how to grow things. Um, and I apologize. I'm, uh, But no, I think I think Jody is definitely going to win. And I think this could also be where Flash maybe comes back. We haven't heard from him in a while. It's a handicap match. And I think some shenanigans could ensue. I and Flash to, might come out there and help. I talked to Flash yesterday. Uh, yesterday, Danny hasn't called him. Danny's I talked to Flash today. How is how is my dad doing? I ain't calling Flash. He broke my eye socket. But he's well, he's your sir. Thing we've called him. He's your surrogate nope. father. Nope. Nope. Disowned. You can't disown your surrogate father. Don't, surrogate. Don't talk about your stepdad that way. Yeah. Be nice to your stepdad. He works very hard. He might come back with breaking the my eye. Well, did you deserve it? Was uh pretty sure I didn't. I don't know. I well, wasn't that's, there. That's before you knew, though, that he was your dad. So, I, that you know what? That does not change the fact that Darth Vader cut off Luke Skywalker's hand. Well, he like, didn't. He well, well he no, he already. It. He well, was the thing is, off. Luke, here's the thing: Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader already knew because the Emperor told him in Episode Five, like right before that fight, and then he realized, "Oh shit, I have a son." Don't try to out Star Wars me. Move on. Wait, hold on. We we've heard you try to explain Star Wars before, and you're an idiot. So we're moving on. Okay, so let's give me this. I'm no, not we're as, not giving you I, anything. No, no, no. No, I there's am, other matches on, that are on. happening. I'm got, not, what's this list? Wait, of I have stuff? I have a final word on this. No, you don't. I'm not as bad as Travis T when it comes to my knowledge of Star Wars. No, it, what's worse is that you know it and still get it wrong. He at least has never watched it, so he's allowed a pass of getting he it. Called wrong. Jar Jar Binks a space platypus. He's kind of not wrong. He I mean, he's like a one. Sith, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see it. It's like John Cena. I can't see it. Hey, Tony, Baba Ghoul Ross is here. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you, Tony, Baba Ghoul Ross. You're muted. <laughs> that was a happy <laughs> little accident. You know how that goes. Hey, folks, how you doing? It's uh, Tony, Baba Ghoul. How you doing? And uh, listen, this is the artwork of a, of a shithead. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Tony Babagool, here's a question for you. Since we got you here, before we go to the next match, last show it was announced that the LIM will be a part of Fan Access doing a live Lovely Intoxicated podcast. Oh, would you well, the fans ex- can the fans expect to see you there? Uh, are there three stripes on an Adidas tracksuit? I'll leave you with that. Probably more than yes. three. I mean, on one logo, yeah, but I, I counted both sides, so it's technically six. I did mental math. I counted in my head. There are three. I didn't. I I learned that in in school. Ment, ment, there there yeah, are three. I counted. Is failing. Yeah. All right. Speaking of whatever you just said, we have Eric Schultz versus Shaq Jordan. Now, Shaq has been interfering in the undeniable affairs and last month got pinned after a miscommunication with Rock to the Top briefcase holder Gunner Brave. Match this match was also made by Damian Saint. Now, this is the second month in a row, I believe, and you can correct me if there if there was also a match in February, I'm trying to remember, but this is uh, this is going to be another time where Shaq is going to go up against the undeniable. How's this going to play out? And we'll start with Maximus Orion again. Oof. Um, after teaming with Shaq, I'm going to have to go with Shaq. I'm not even, I'm not even going to discuss the logistics of this match at all. Um, I got served after last show because J Beck's goofy ass, like took a, uh, you know, a header off the off the uh the stairs in the back two months in a row because his penguin ass is wearing his sunglasses and he just went down backstage and somehow that was my fault because I sent him to the back when I was a referee. Um, and then Schultz served me with a dirty summons, <laughs> like that means anything. Like I don't know what Jbeck suing me for more cookies. I don't understand. So um. And if he needs me to go get more of his crappy Aldi brand Thin Mints, then that's fine. Um, But I would love nothing more than to see Shaq kick Schultz harder than he does a light fixture. So I don't know if you're able to comment on this, but what's the status of that litigation? Where are things at now with that? Oh, that's all. That's gone. That's done. That's dealt with. Oh. Already done. Already done. One, one, One called Joe Pesci. And Jay back back down carefully so he doesn't fall again. But, Treated. Um. Yeah. Pretty much. That that was it was it was one phone call, and he the got yurts. on the phone with Schultz. We were all on yeah. the speakerphone, and uh, let's just say some words were exchanged that are not appropriate, and. Uh, J Beck and Schultz took their dirty summons back and uh, it's it's over now. And thank God, you know, Captain Dave and my dad built the those new stairs uh back there so now that Gimpy can't fall down them as easily. So we should be good. Although I don't plan on refereeing any matches anytime soon, so we'll see. Double J, you're sitting in your chair doing this podcast, so Let's have you contribute. How do you think this is going to go? Well, I think there's a lot to talk about with this, but I I have an interesting point I would like to start at. Why okay. were you talking with Schultz earlier this week? It seemed like you were having a sit-down conversation with him. And does that have anything to do with this match? Uh, well, I was going to talk about this Monday on JFW. Um, realistically... Uh, what I can say is that uh, those conversations right now are privileged. Uh, that doesn't, there's no indication. I'm not joining Undeniable. There's no need to worry there. There's nothing swaying that piece of it. But I will talk about it more next week. Wow. We're okay. I'd like to call bullshit right now. You're the guy who owns a fat Damien Saint shirt, okay? Not just a regular Damien Saint shirt, but you already got 
the new edition fat Damien Saint. Wait, well, wait, hold, Gabagool. That's just because he bought a size that's a shirt that's sized two sizes too small. So when he puts no, it no, on, no. it like stretches he's out the got, face. He's also got homeless Damien Saint shirt. All right, listen. This guy's he can't control Damien how he grows Saint. his beard. It's all scraggly. We know he looks he homeless. Acts, you don't lie to us. You are a Damien Saint guy. I'm not. I I, ah. I am not. Yeah, why wait? Why would you say think I'm a Damien Saint guy after all this time? You wore his shirt when we watched WrestleMania 38. That just means oh. that I had another shirt that I had to wear. You cannot yeah. do that, yeah. sir. You also weren't wearing socks, and it was weird. WrestleMania 38. I don't wear, you wore, it was in my own house. You wore that. But you had shirt. a guest over. You wore that so? shirt the night Undertaker went into the Hall of Fame. You wore that. Or the that they had the Hall of Fame celebration. That no, is just I didn't, disrespectful. I, did, as hell. I didn't wear it for the Hall of Fame. I wore, you wore it, it at Wrestle- the show. Did, did on WrestleMania I, 38? Did you wear it? Did you wear it when he walked out when they were announcing the Hall of Famers? Nope. Oh, yes, well, you at, did. At WrestleMania? I was there for both yeah. days. You had the shirt on. Yeah, but I was. I wore the same thing since night one at WrestleMania. Yeah, the Damian here, State shirt. Here's the thing. And the same gray here's, sweatpants. It was very uncomfortable. But here's the thing. Josh showed up to a WrestleMania party drinking AEW root beer. What kind of fan is he? A and W. No, AEW. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> AEW. He, he lives in Indiana. Place. We all know he's not right in the head. But yeah, they got nothing to do there anyway. That's true. He's always trying to fix roller coasters to buy time, but he keeps breaking them then too. He's at the uh, Corn Sino right now. He's I talked to him before we got on. The, if you you play the slot machine and corn comes out of it instead of coins, like popped or unpopped? Or yes. Like, okay. Depends on the machine. So if we were get, talking if, about the uh, check Jordan, huh? Yes, we were, and nothing yeah, else. We weren't work. talking about anything with Schultz and me. No, nothing else. Tony, what do you think about the whole Shaq and and Schultz thing? Well, here's my thoughts. All right, earlier. Well, actually, it was last month already. I went down to a little town called Kankakee. How you doing? And I was at the Majestic. I was with PX. And uh, we saw Eric Charles wrestling in another promotion. And he comes out with uh, uh, some other kind of lawyer. They're called like penile damages or something. And these guys, all they do is fight dirty. All right. Now, whether he's with the penile damages or he's with the undeniable, they always fight dirty. So Shaq Jordan, good luck to you, fella. And 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 Schultz, go to the doctor and get that penile damages settled. Chet, what do you think about this match? Who's who's go, who's gonna win? I am Shaq Joe. Oh, that he can say. He can say that. I'm learned from him, Shaq Joe. Captain Dave, um, I'm gonna have to go with with Chef Jordan. All right. All right. We also have on this show Koa Laksamana and Christian Rose. This match was made by Nuke himself after last month in the midst of the brawl between TDC and Christian Rose. Christian Rose accidentally struck Nuke. Now, accidentally. Koa. Koa went has Kalise with him and seemingly now while Christian Rose had Brooks with him last month Brooks Connor Hopkins and Damian Deschain now they're all trying to figure out how to fix Christian Rose now Christian's going into this match all on his own with all of everything that happened in the past year going through his mind is he going to be able to focus on the Hawaiian hitman? Probably not. Christian Rose, the Christian Rose has been going absolutely like psycho for like months now. And I'm surprised it took Berna this long to figure out that Bucky was the problem. Uh, the other two had that Connor and, and uh, Deschain, they had that figured out almost immediately that it was Bucky causing the problem. Now, they didn't care, and they were just going to, you know, kick the crap out of him either way. But um, uh, it it's about time that somebody actually get it through to Christian Rose that 
he does have a problem. Somebody needs to beat it into him. And unfortunately, it's not going to be, uh, you know, Connor and Deshane and Berna. It's going to be somebody who is equally as crazed right now because of everything that the Undeniable and especially Steve Michaels uh, has put him through. And that would be uh, Koa Laksamana. So Christian Rose is probably going to need a lot of uh, reading material after this match is over to deal with the pain that Koa is going to put him through. So um, he's going to need one to drink and he's going to need about one on his forehead and probably one over the other eye. So that's my take on it. I would not want to be in Koa's path at all right now, especially if you're in the way of something that he wants. No, actually, Chet, uh, I know you're a big uh, TDC guy. I mean, you've been seeing all of this play out. What's your take on everything that's been happening with the Coyotes? It's crazy, but if 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 Koa makes it, uh, Kaylee's again in with him coming for the show. Some reason, crowd gets behind the Koa, and Christian Rose only brings left hand to to dance. So I'm going Koa for this, Captain Dave. Well, it certainly seems like that Christian Rose has been out of sorts. I'm thinking a little bit more than a month. It it goes back a, a, a few shows. Um, and I think that's going to be his, his downfall, is that he's not going to be able to keep it together and will just make a mistake somewhere. So I, I would have to go with Koa as well. Tony Gabagool, what do you say? What do you say? Oh, I got something to say. All say right. It. Listen, I don't care who wins or loses. I just hope we all have fun. But besides that, Pat Ackerman, mom, uh, she said something like that when on our soccer games back in the day. But anyways. Uh, I played volleyball. Volleyball, that's what it was. Listen, I don't <laughs> care who wins or loses. All I want to say is where else on a Saturday night are you going to get a veteran of the business like Christian Rose versus a guy who's been on the NWA in Koalaxamana? For twenty dollars front row or fifteen dollars general admission, you're not going to find that anywhere else, folks. Besides RPW, we're all Amen. winners. All Amen. right, we are the winners. Thank you. That's all I got to say. Way to way to talk. Double J. I think uh, I think Koa is going to pull out the win here, and we're all going to get laid. Yes, it's about time. Anyway, we have the next match. Actually, no. We have something that Maximus is doing next. And it is a high-stakes contract signing between himself and and Ryan Matthews. Now, Maximus, want to tell us a little bit about what this contract signing is all about? Um, well, yep, yeah, there you go. Um, so obviously I have a few strings that I can pull uh, via Epic Games and Fortnite um, because of my connections. So not only did I have the Black Knight at um, Shamrock Showdown, but now I need somebody that's going to mediate this contract signing the way that it's supposed to be. And the only person that I could think that, you know, for a price would be willing to do it would be a uh, wild card. Um, he's very good with this kind of thing. High stakes, obviously, you know, um, lots of, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word here. He's used to working by himself to take down large amounts of people, right? That is what I'm doing with the undeniable. Uh, and he knows that I'm kind of screwed in this situation. Now I will have turtle out there, but I don't throw my ownership power around the way that Saint throws his GM power around. So at the snap of his fingers, I could have Schultz, Steve Michaels, the Kings of six, uh, all out there 
And I, I have not been like, okay, well, where's Aaron Stone? Well, he's getting ready for a match. Where's this guy? Where's this guy? Where's this guy? So I need somebody out there on my side other than Turtle. So this is the only guy I could think to get. Now, I can't say too much more than that. We're just going to have to see how the contract signing goes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why is Turtle not I did good not, enough? I did, huh? not, I did not need to see Turtle's nose hairs. I didn't mean to zoom that far, Max. There's no more straw. What, the technology. Yeah, this we got the you straw out it. from the news. This is called the. Uh, this is like uh, high definition. All right. No, that's not high def. No, that maybe, maybe he's too drywall this day. Let me change it to something we can all agree on. <laughs> so true. So true. So. Here's a big question because Damian Saint is going to be out there. And about a year ago, you were in a similar situation with the contract signing. I was. And um, although the match that we had after the contract signing did not go in my favor, the contract signing did. So I know what I'm preparing, you know, to go out there and do. Do I think that we're just going to go out there and sign a little piece of paper and that'll be it? No. If I, I would have... I would have had like Professor Blackburn or something mediate this if I thought it was going to be that easy and in and out. A simple in and out procedure. If I thought it was going to be that, I wouldn't need Wildcard uh, there to mediate. But I know that it's not going to be easy. It's going to it's going to end in a fight. There's just no two ways about it. I've been trying to get my hands on this on this hairless cat, slippery mother for a year, almost a year now. You could say that on this show, by the way. I, I know. I'm just trying to be as long as I can say all right, fine. <laughs> That's that hairless cat, slippery motherfucker. Yeah. Since September. <laughs> since <laughs> thanks, Shogun. Since September. <laughs> so it, we're not ending this contract signing without a fight. And then there's gonna be after the words that are in this contract. There's going to be no getting out of May's match for him at all. It's not, it's, it's, it's in May, it, it will come to an end. His end. Now, here's the biggest question about this contract signing. Last year, someone was turned into a coat rack at a contract signing. Oh, God. Are, <laughs> are we, he, I, I will kick his ass if he's there. And because nobody gave two shits about the contract signing once Damian Saint put that fucking coat on his head. You know, everybody what? was like, oh, and me and Rihanna you know, are talking and everybody's like, move the coat rack. And I'm like, what? He uh, rose my attention that I get for 10 minutes. Our good old friend, Smiley McGee, he actually put that on his resume. And that's why he got hired to fix the roller coasters out there in Indiana land. Yep. That is true. So they took somebody whose main occupation is not and, being able to see and said, let's have this guy work on our roller coasters. That made him. Ten times more qualified than the average Hoosier. Okay, they missed an opportunity then to put him by admissions. <laughs> the coat check. <laughs> there we go. Double J. Uh, I mean, it. Hopefully, a contract gets signed. Ryan Matthews can okay, learn so. to. Well, yeah, this isn't a contract signing. High stakes contract signing. He's gonna. He's going to finally own up to some things. I don't know where this casino guy is from. I guess the Fort Fortnites. Um, it, it should be should be a good time, and someone's probably going to go through a table. It All right, you know happens. what? You guys are not that old. Can you stop saying the Fortnites like it's the Facebook or the COVID or the pots? Like, you guys are not. 56. Hey, all we're saying is if you put, if you do a Fortnite stream on GameCube, Tony Gabagool can join. Yeah, if I want, the GameCube would fry. I can't hear you. The Gabagool is such a boomer, he doesn't know how to unmute himself. Listen, guys, I know how to use technology. I got the game right here. It's the fourth night. I'm ready to play, Maximus. Just let me know how to do it. The fact that you're that much of a boomer that you're making that joke, but you don't say, well, isn't a Fortnite 14 nights? Like, the term has been around since, like, Jesus. I'm not that old. 
No, even ba- Baby LeGreco. Even yeah, Baby yeah, LeGreco. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I was born last night, but I wasn't born at night, all right? Thank Man, you. Man, you look old for a guy who was born last night. I forgot to get you a birthday present. <laughs> oh, we'll save that for next year. Wait, wait, no, this was a leap year. So it'll be on the third. Anyway, we also have two main events this month. A double main event, if you will. And the first of the two main events is for the RPW Championship between Steve Michaels and Aaron Stone. This was a rematch that was granted by Mr. General Manager Guy, the Amazing Turtle. Michaels' dominance over the past year led to him winning that championship. And you also have Damian Saint at ringside. And even before this match happens, he's already defended the title in Hawaii. And successfully, of course. So he's already had a title defense under his belt. Is the Undeniable going to be able to continue to hold down the Dream Breaker Aaron Stone? It's where's Gunner Brave in his briefcase? How is is that going to come into play? There's so many think, questions going into this match. I don't think that Gunner is going to try to cash that briefcase in when he knows that the rest of the undeniable is just looming somewhere and could screw him out of that contract at any moment. It's he he's not he's not stupid enough to go out there and try to even if 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 Aaron Stone wins the title he's not going to go out there and cash it in because he knows that as soon as he runs out there boom undeniable. They're just going to be right there. I mean, you got to have that title out of the picture, out of the undeniable picture completely in order for Gunner to even think about cashing that in. He is not stupid. Yes, he's tough. Can he take all of them out? No. And then what the rest of us are not going to go out there and help fight off the undeniable and then go, okay, go ahead and cash in on Stone. Let me, uh, let me take you what you're saying and raise it a little bit. What if, all right, hypothetically speaking, Gunner Brave and Aaron Stone have a handshake deal, and they say, hey, I'll cash in, let's team up against him, take him out, and then we'll go one-on-one with each other. What's the odds of that happening? Because the Undeniables, there's still more of them. Were well, they on earlier in the show? Maybe they'll be too tired to come out. That's my thought. Every show they've done it. Every show. <laughs> What if we put Bruno on the ramp and prevented them from coming and no one get past him? Ooh, then, like oh, that. wait. And then Damien Saint will be like, I'm watching you, Jack Kabowski. Always watching. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You'd have you, you it would just turn into okay, Bruno, you gotta stand right there. Hold on, let me put down my nachos. And then our <laughs> undeniable's already out there. Listen, no, it's his commentator one... tots. He's got to put those down. I think there's only one man who can take out the undeniable, and we all know who that is, right? Well, we don't have enough money to bring the Undertaker in. <laughs> no, no, it's Mike Madonna. <laughs> he would have to shut up for ter- for thirty seconds, or not be talking to cousin Joe. Dude, to block the undeniable. Joe in a tag team, and they could take out the entire universe. All right, these guys, I love them. From the neighborhood, the undeniable would just leave with the amount of talking in between those two. I the that's nice, what it'll this take, sounds like Maximus. an absolute win. What you're, you're not you're not convincing there us. There goes otherwise. the undeniable, and cousin <laughs> Joe's still like trying to talk to him. All right, look, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, Jamie and Sam will be like, "Here's your show back." <laughs> <laughs> I'd say book it, man. We've cracked the code. Chet, yeah. what do you what do you think Fat about Knights of Columbus? That's your code to <laughs> defeating the undeniable. Let them talk. <laughs> that you know that's going to be a chant next week. Now, yep, I, Knights of Columbus. I'm thinking Let Steve, talk. Michael, <laughs> Steve, Michael, Steve, Michael, Steve, Michael, Steve, Michael. Oh, Chet's Chet, Steve why Michaels. do you say that? Because he's big man. He's not stopping this guy. He is a big, big boy. Man. For yeah. this match, I wish I would stay and not go home. Captain Dave? You know, I think he's right, but I will still be rooting for Aaron. 
All right. And the last match for the RPW Tag Team Championships. The final level, Shogun, all day Marche Rocket versus Kings of the Six. And a match granted by Turtle. And what's really interesting about this match is everything that's been going on with Skyler Reed. Skyler has been very hesitant in joining in with a lot of the undeniable shenanigans. He's reluctant with Devin August. You could have even seen that in the match they had a couple months back. Do you think they're going to be able to get on the same page? Do you think that Skyler is going to be able to have a clear head. Will he be focused on bringing more gold to the undeniable? Are we, are we actually supposed to believe that they're going to be the final (laughs) level? That's what Max miss. I was going to say, is this a part of their contract or something? Like they get April 13th off or something. Yeah, pretty much. They don't even know how to, the the Kings of six don't even know how to work as a team anymore. I mean, yeah, they got one over on me and Shaq. Great job. Me and Shaq are not a tag team. And they used J- they used Gimpy's cane to hit me in the head after the hairless cat came out there. So it was really a 4v2. Wait, I don't Kane, care how I... many you have against the final level. Kane, I thought he was in Knox County being the mayor. No, no, no. C-A-N-E. Oh, oh, my, that, that one's on me. My bad, y'all. My cousin Vinny, C A L L O. <laughs> Chet, you ha- I saw you hand your hand up. You had some thoughts on this. Is my friend Jose from Berwyn? Him say, is good match because, and I'm quote, Skylar Reed is boco loco in the coco way. And I'm not know what this means, but I think crazy. Maybe sounds about right. Captain Dave, I think I think um, um, that uh, Skylar Reed is still scared from October, and I think that is weighing really, really heavily on his mind, and he can't focus. So, um, but even even when. Kings of Six were at their at their top. I would still have to go for final level. I just they just don't have what it takes, even if they're at their best, to to beat out final level. Man of two J's, you are also known as Double J. What do you think of this? I mean, I, we have, you have to go with the final level. It would take like twelve Devin Augusts to just make one of Marche. So like that alone is just like you out out stacked them out gained them and I don't even think can they reach like can they reach them they're t- they're too high of a level. Wait no so, I think you're confusing them with me. I'm well that... I I know you're short but yeah. like I'm pretty sure Devin August is like an inch or two taller than you but still like that's how he was eligible to get into this like you're you're not. Um, I'll I'll have to double check with him next month when I and maybe that'll be an interview question. Because we'll I'm the backstage interviewer. Hey, there we go. There we go. But yeah, that is the entire card for Rocket Pro Wrestling Spring Break, Saturday, April 13th. Our Doors English. open at 4. Bell time is at 5. Tickets are $15. General admission, $20 for front row. You'll see that guy. You'll see that guy. Next, Miss Orion. I'll you'll see double J. I'll probably be around. Bill Shelley might go to this, and Chet Gunderson will be there as well. No, Chet is gone. Remember? No, I'm sing for you. I'm leave it on it jet plane, not knowing I'll be back for again. Oh, in the words of my dad. Oh, damn. Well, I hope you have a safe flight, Chet. We'll miss you next week. I shall be back for May. Hooray. All right. Um, Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? What do you guys want to talk about? I've just got a question that's been digging at me. Captain Dave, where'd your beard go? Um... Hard hitting questions here in the lovely intoxicated podcast. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) 
what he says. I don't um, think anybody is gonna I, talk I like he is. really like need a clean it. face for some very personal reasons. He didn't want to get any in the tots. That's right. There Makes you sense. go. Makes sense. Tater tots, the sauce is just too cheesy and it would interfere. I'd have yellow beard. You heard it here first, folks. If you're gonna eat the commentator tots, shave your beards. But but I like my beard. People don't get rid think of it. I'm people get don't think I'm a high schooler with it. We think you're a weirdo <laughs> with it. Shave it. I think it looks very, you're not very allowed to nice. go to those anymore. Remember, you're not allowed within 500 feet of those. Ever uh, since the sock hop bust. Yeah. N- no, I was in fourth grade then. You could still pass as a fourth grader even with that. See, beard. that's see, that's why. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm an educated man. That's why. Hey, I'm that's late. me with Jeff Steeples. That's a that's you next to an average height man. Short that Jeff Steeples' head is completely cut off, and you're still. <laughs> it's because he's so the short. Okay, it's because he's so short. I couldn't fit them both in. So well, I no said, shit, Gabagool, because he's so short. That's I get that. Hey, listen. When are we bringing this big fella back? That's up to the behemoth. Not he's us. Out in, uh, he's out in Las Vegas, right? Not anymore. No, he's one of the originals, right? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'd love to see him. That was that was Chet's guy. That was honestly Chet. If let's say hypothetical, could we do a hypothetical real quick? A quick fantasy booking: Jeff Steeples versus this wild child Connor Hopkins. Who walks out of there with the the with the outer oh, limits championship? Limit uh, hello. I thought you were going Steeples. Steve Michaels there. Steeples. Yeah, Connor's good, but I, he ain't getting away from the behemoth because Jeff's quick too. Honestly, those, big guys those, can be quick. Is behemoth's real home? Real early home. days of RPW. All right, these guys were were the real deal. They were tough. They were behemoths, and now they're wearing like pink and they're walking around. They got ties on. I'm talking about Eric Schultz. What an idiot! All right, I'm done. But here's another question. How about this? Jeff Steeples versus Steve Michaels. Who comes out of that one? Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. I'd have to reinforce the ring. And the floorboards. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see the bear hug then. I don't. Could he even put it on? <laughs> I'm sure he could. Steve's got long arms. He, he does put it on, but it. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold it for that long. Or pick him off the ground. Mm. Very interesting. Somebody call Jeff Steeples. That's all I'm saying. There is one thing I do want to bring up real quickly. Uh, Captain Dave. Yes. Now. No fish sticks. No fish sticks. I I hate fish. I hate fish sticks. So you're good. Um. So, as you know, we're doing our um, live podcast at Fan Access. And part of that is going to be the main event of that show, which is the annual LIM induction. Actually, it wouldn't be annual because we've already done one. Anyway, we are wondering if you would be interested in joining the lovely intoxicated men and being inducted at fan access. I would be terribly honored to do that. I would love to do that. I just got to make sure I can bring in staff to monitor the kitchen while I'm gone. So, you know, if there's anything being cooked, it doesn't get burnt. Very good guys. There you have it. We have captain Dave joining bill Shelley. In the 2024 LIM induction portion of the podcast live podcast live podcast. My question is, why didn't we do it sooner? Dave is a stand up guy. I love him. He's a hell of a chef. He puts Gordon Ramsay to shame. Okay. I love this fucking guy. Well, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Do you know how busy I am in the kitchen until intermission is finished. It is very hairy to get to leave, leave the kitchen, leave the galley, because it's just, 
It's nonstop, um, particularly uh, when the doors open till the matches start. And then at intermission, we have six, eight, ten deep. And um, we need more staff, and I'm working on that. But uh, um, it, 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 that's why it has to wait for fan access. As long as I have coverage in the kitchen, I can come out and be inducted. It would Very be good. a perfect time. Very good. And you heard it here first. And Anybody have other final thoughts before we wrap up this this show? We close the tab on this episode, if you will. Just commentator thoughts. Commentator thoughts. I'm going to look like Fat Cody Rhodes or or even uh, even Fat Damian Saint by the time I'm done eating all those. <laughs> Maximus, any final thoughts? Oh uh, no, I've 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 got nothing. I have nothing except Ryan Matthews sucks at Fortnite. Yeah, he does. Chet, any final thoughts? No, you have a great show, everybody. Have fun by Shelly House uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Make it fun. Make it WrestleMania. Make it great show. See you for May. And thank you for all your doings for RPW from Men Behind the Scenes with Dimani. Good Our night. pleasure, Chet. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, we are going to close the tab on this episode. I have been PX. This has been Maximus Orion. This has been Double J. This has been Tony Gabagool. This has been Chuck Gunderson and Captain Dave. And stay lovely. Stay intoxicated. Stay intoxicated.